And while we have all been flooded with emotions during this pandemic, there was one key emotion which had not been mentioned. Anger. This pandemic has brought out emotions in all of us. Even those who like to keep our emotions categorized at arm's length. Look what is happening at the state level. We have state officials acknowledging the disparity between people of color affected by COVID-19, blaming chronic conditions instead of the institutional plagues which have created these conditions and strangled marginalized groups for centuries. How can we expect someone to be healthy when their only source of food within walking distance is at a gas station? How can we hope for healthier urban communities when grocery stores refuse to open in communities of color? Mayor Woodfin has attempted four, four contracts with different grocery chains to bring more healthy food into the city of Birmingham. All have rejected him. Look at the hate against marginalized groups that continues to escalate since 2016. Hate that is now turned toward governors trying to flatten the curve. Hatred in the form of large weapon-carrying, Confederate flag-toting, maskless persons who demand haircuts. Hate, as depicted at the rally against the Jewish governor of Illinois' stay-at-home order. You've seen these words before. German for the phrase... Work will set you free. The words inscribed over the gates of the Auschwitz concentration camp. These protesters are not trying to get back to work. They are trying to get others to get back to work to serve them. Hate against security forces who are trying to enforce public health policies, including a security guard in Flint, Michigan, who was killed this week for telling a woman she could not enter a store because she wasn't wearing a mask. He was trying to enforce the law. Hate when two white men see a black man named Ahmed Aubrey out for a morning jog and decide to kill him in cold blood, all captured on video. Hate which simmers in these reopen wherever groups on Facebook, threatening domestic terrorism if we continue to let science and medicine lead the way. There's a lot to be angry about. And yet, as my college professor, Reverend Dr. Robin Myers once said recently, there's no future in not talking to each other. We have to find ways to come together. I agree with the protesters on one thing. Our hairdressers and tattoo artists and small business owners need a way to pay their bills without quitting their jobs, just as our doctors and nurses and medical teams need personal protective equipment from the federal stockpile instead of asking states to fend for themselves. Those folks who are arguing for states' rights and local control only want to do so when it benefits them. 